Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi Pudai Leiden. Hello Leiden. Welcome to the newest episode of our English speaking weekly show in Leiden. And our show is about international people living in Leiden and their stories. Today we have amazing two guests in our studio. We have Louisa Stewart and Julie Taylor. Welcome to our studio. We have asked you to bring amazing uh, little objects that have an emotional value to both of you. So why don't we start from um, Louisa, from you. What did you bring us today? Sure. I brought in a little ninja. Oh, wow. It's a pin that I had made. Um, it's very personal to me because it was um, my step towards starting a company. Um, it is a girl. <laughs> And this was my first... Um, major um, initiative that um, I had going from a, working in an NGO to running my own business. So that's my little ninja. Yay, I would love to hear more about uh, the story of the ninja later. Uh, what about you? Um, so mine's a key ring. So this is my father's and he passed away the year that I moved to Leiden. Um, he never understood what I did for a job when I worked in a bank, so he'll n he would never understand my life over here. But I just like the sound of it. It's really old and worthless, but it means a lot to me. Wow, I'm sorry about your father passing. Um, so we have cre created um, short videos um, that gives a bit of a description about your life. Why don't we watch those videos? First, your video, Lisa. Great. Yeah? Hello. Come on in. Thank you. Sure. Come on through. Um, my name is Louisa Stewart. Um, I'm an Australian. Uh, I've been in the Netherlands for the last four years um, and I'm a quite a global traveller. <laughs> so, welcome to our house. Um, we have a beautiful house um, next to the old Rhine. Um, it's a hundred year old house and we have the marker at the front of the house to, uh, um, to showcase that. We have a, a lovely terrace out here. Let me take you out. So I quite like having a garden here. Um, I grew up on a farm in Australia, so having um, nature and environment was very important to me. Um, but also I love living in, in uh, city, so <laughs> I wanted to try to compromise on, on having both. We're here in the Old Rhine, um, and I actually used to live on the Old Rhine in Germany, so I've pretty much just come straight <laughs> down river, up river. <laughs> but it's a beautiful place to live. Um, we have the bridges on either end, So we have a lot of uh, traffic that comes through here on a, during the day. Um, and particularly Sail Leiden was a couple of years ago and we sat here on a Friday um, with our feet in buckets of water because it was so hot that day and just watched so many sailboats go past. It was just beautiful. So we love bread and cheese and we have a lot of bread and cheese, but actually I'm not so particular on the Dutch foods um, as my partner is. He's quite happy to have um, something like a, a fricadella or something different, but I, I like my structure of basic food. <laughs> Bitterbollen is my favorite. Anytime um, a friend comes over from Edinburgh to visit us, we're always out having a drink and some bitterbollen. It's just fantastic. Bitterbollen is a, um, a breaded meat. It's like a paste almost uh, with chunks of meat in it and it's deep fried. We don't make it at home because it's only for when we go out that we have this, but it is and, and different drinks and things. So, for instance, our cordials, <laughs> we can still get those um, from some of the shops around the Netherlands. Um, and we're happy to travel for 20 minutes to go to a shop to, to pick up what we need. I have a few parts of my home here, and, um, pictures that my mother's given me or that, uh, that uh, she's bought me over the years. I think the farm styles. So the last time I was home, my mum actually gave these to me um, to be able to keep myself. And this I've had since I was three years old. So the shadow box is something that my mother collected from me for years. There's ornaments in there that have been 30, 40 years old. Part of my um, entry into Leiden was to try to find social networks. So using Facebook, Meetup, trying to find groups that had common interests and something just to sit down and have a cup of tea and, and chat to people. I think I really found my feet when I joined a chorus um, called Singing Unlimited. They are based in Hoofdorp. But actually, um, the ladies that I sing with are fantastic and I do enjoy singing. So for me, that step forward um, to take initiative to join a chorus was something that I've actually benefited from. 
even though the chorus is in Dutch, so all of our rehearsals, etc., in Dutch, we still sing in English. So for me, as long as I can ask people for help, I can always uh, be a, a participant and, and enjoy my chorus singing. So it's just something I love. Louisa, beautiful new house. Yes. <laughs> and you are the writer of uh, Old Rhine. Yes, from we, Germany to the Netherlands. Yes, it was a lovely um, coincidence that uh, living in the south of Germany and then moving to Leiden and living on the same river, it was it was a lovely gesture to sort of move over um, and, and that feel that connection between Germany and the Netherlands. So Julie, let's watch uh, your uh, profile. Let's see, where, where did you take us? Hi, welcome. Come on in. I'm Julie Taylor. I'm um, a British lady. I've been living in Leiden since August 2018. Um, we were renting originally, so we're glad to move here, especially now my husband's at home all the time because of Corona, that we're not on top of each other. Our rental was a little bit too small for that. Yeah, we get on really well. Um, they don't speak a lot of English, um, a real mixture, but they're a little bit older than us. Um, so we were lucky to have our house warming um, last February, just before coronavirus hit. Um, so yeah, it was nice to get everybody together because you know they want to come and have a nosy around your house. So um, so that was lovely. But apart from that, it's just waving at people now because can't go in each other's houses so easily. Um, but yeah. As friendly as they can be. I don't expect them to speak English. I suppose if you don't speak much Dutch, I would uh, maybe um, write down a little phrase or maybe post a card through the door um, to introduce yourself. Maybe get somebody to help you or use Google Translate. Just to say, hi, I'm new. I'm sorry I don't speak much Dutch. Um, but just reach out to them. They have buy-in uh, and coat maquillas here. So you, you engage a, a, a person to help you buy, which is not a thing in the UK. And you think, well, I bought a house before in a different country and it can't be too difficult. But um, And they can charge a lot of money. Um, but yeah, if you've bought a house before, you know what to look for. Uh, I'm not a structural engineer that you have to engage these people, but to pay for somebody to just help you with the buying process. We're trying to support local businesses by buying takeaways, but you've got to think about the corona pounds. Um, so yeah, a bit of a mixture. Um, my husband likes to cook as well, so he cooks every Sunday. Um, so we just take it in turns. Um, I like Hotspot. Um, she's also a friend of mine. Um, what else? Oh, there's a great ribs place um, near the Holy Church. I can't pronounce it. Do you know the really big church? Uh, great rib place. Um, oh, and there's a burger van that comes to the um, park and ride. Uh, we were there just at the weekend. Uh, the burger bus, the burger bus. Let me show you the offer. Quite a few birds come and visit, so we don't need any uh, pets in the house as long as we feed the birds. So one of the reasons why we bought the house, if not the main reason, was for the garden office, um, which I was going to use for my business, which is why we've got BN for Blue Ninja on the door. But we have my husband working here. Oh, here oh. is the intruder. Yes. Yeah. He's made himself you have been home. illegally occupying yeah, an office. No, this, this is where I'm sent to hide during the day. I'm not allowed in the house. Oh, now I feel sorry for you. Is that an exile for you? You should. Normally that's locked with me in. <laughs> Fantastic. I uh, love it living here. It's just a great city to live in. I uh, just love the history of the place. Uh, but also easy commute for work, etc. I think we've definitely got our territories marked. Yeah, we, we play nice, don't we? Yeah. As long as we keep it uh, in our own spaces, <laughs> we're fine. Yes. So yeah, fine. It's just when you get to the end of the day and you think, why has he not started tea? Oh, am I starting tea? So if that's the only argument we're going to have, I can live with that. Julie, congratulations on buying a new house. Thank you. How, how does it feel? Yeah, it feels great. Um, we were renting to start with um, in the centre and there would be no way that we could work work together, me and my husband, all day, every day because of coronavirus at home. There wasn't enough room for us. So now we've got space um, and he loves to cook. So I get 
um, my meals cook for me um, quite regularly, so that's nice as well. That's amazing. I love men who cook. That's great. Um, so, ladies, you have known each other for a while now, huh? Yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Louisa, how did you two meet? So we met through a Facebook group. Um, someone had posted, uh, where are you from? And the person had come from Scotland. And Julie had commented on that. And I went, oh, wow, we lived like 10 minutes from each other in Scotland and never met. Um, and I uh, messaged Julie and said, would you like to have a coffee? And we went and had a coffee and a chat. And um, we were just connected very easily and, and quickly from that meeting. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been great knowing Julie as well, just to have a friendly face in Leiden. And, um, you know, we go out together and uh, we also work together. So for us, it's a, it's a great business and personal relationship. Um, Julie, now you have an English-speaking fellow yeah. to connect with. Yeah, she's, she's helped me get my first bike, <laughs> took me on my first bike lesson. <laughs> so really important things, you know. Um, so, yeah, no, it's great to have somebody that you can just bounce ideas off and ask mm. the silly questions about living in another country when you don't know the answers. So yeah. Exactly, especially when you don't speak the Dutch yet. When Not you just yet. come into the country, it's <laughs> nice to have another person to communicate with. Definitely, yeah. Are there any activities that you two um, are doing together in Leiden? Uh, we've done all sorts of things. We used to go to the gym together. Yes. Um, we've been kayaking um, as well with through another contact. What else have we done? Oh, bike riding to the Hague. Bike riding to the Hague. That was fun until I yeah. got a flat tire. <laughs> um, what else? I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, obviously, before Corona, we, you know, we used to get out and network in other cities as well mm. and work in our office in the Hague. Um, so we're a bit more limited, but um, we speak every day for hours on end. <laughs> well, you both followed your spouses. Um, into the Netherlands. Um, you were the expat wives in Leiden. So how was it for both of you when you were just entering the city? I think we, we like to label it trailing spouses. I'm not actually married, so uh, I refer to my partner mm. rather than my husband. Um, but uh, trailing spouses is a great way to describe who we are. And we find that there's a lot of people in similar situations who have come here because their partners or husband wife has found a job. And uh, they arrive and have to try to work out what they're doing next. So uh, it was kind of good for us to be on that same level as well because we had the sh we shared the same experiences and uh, we you know, were navigating the situation together and working out how do we find our feet in Leiden. Mm. I mean, the person who moves with a job usually gets a lot of support from their company and then the spouses or partners are left at home trying to work out how to get the internet um, how, how to deal with a driving license, pay the bills, you know, really important things that need to be done. Um, so don't underestimate the support that those people uh, provide, the people that have moved here that are really important. Um, so, yeah, it's good that we've got our own thing and, and you know, we probably work longer hours than our partners, <laughs> but they're really jealous. Um, these opportunities that we get, they want to be a ninja like us. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now you have more opportunities to explore the city outside of working environment. Right? Yeah, and networking and meeting people. Mm. Yeah, we try to go out and have coffees and and enjoy the city together as well. Um, you know, often on the weekends we'll be messaging each other, and Julie's like, "I'm I'm in the tulip fields today," or you know, we're out um, shopping or um, sitting down on uh, you know near the canal and having a cup of coffee or something. So. Yeah, that's nice to be able to do that. It is. It's yeah. lovely. Um, so uh, I didn't know that both of you have lived in Scotland. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. And um, we all know that recently Scotland had a referendum. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess the question is both of you. And I think um, Julie have voted, right? Um, yeah. I mean, I lived there at the time of the referendum and I didn't vote for independence because I didn't think that Scotland could exist on its own. Um, but if they're going to go for another referendum, um, I think a lot of people will actually vote because of Brexit that Scotland is independent and comes back to Europe. Um, what is your opinion on this, um, Louisa? Do you think they should be independent <laughs> or stay together? My partner's they're Scottish, so um, we, we were in Germany at the time of the vote and there were two things that happened that I did not expect. Trump getting elected and Brexit happening. Yeah, <laughs> and, I mean, the referendum was very controversial. Uh, it divided friends. Um, and I think that was the problem that it became so politically motivated. And it really was, how do you feel about it? You know, do you want this to happen or not? 
Um, we feel very connected to Europe. I do, particularly. Um, but my partner's parents, one voted, one didn't. Um, and I think when you're looking at this, you know, we are in Europe at the moment. You know, we feel the impact of those decisions, but other people don't really see it. So I think it's it's talking about what's going on, but doing it honestly rather than misleading or misguiding or making it a political statement. It just needs to be discussed openly. Mm. I didn't think they had enough infrastructure in place mm -hmm. to be independent because they were saying, what currency are you going to use? And they were like, oh, we're going to use a pound. And it was like, you know, just basics weren't set out. I don't think they were ready for it. Mm. But I think now that Brexit's happened and they've seen the impact to the economy of the UK, I think they'll see that they want to join uh, the EU. Yeah, I'm guessing that one too. But let's see what happens. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, Louisa, you are from all the way from Australia. Yes. So far. <laughs> and you mentioned that you grew up in a farmland. I did. I grew up on a farm outside a town called Wagga Wagga. Wow, Wagga Wagga. <laughs> Wagga Wagga. I love bringing up that name because people just go, what did you say? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I had a very different upbringing to most people I know. Um, you know, my school run was an hour and a half on a bus each way. Um, but it was very interesting and different. And I love that I've got that experience. When I moved from Australia to Scotland, um, I think it was it was nice to be in a city then, um, having lived in a country town. Um, it was exciting and different, um, and I grew to enjoy both aspects of it. Um, moving to Germany, we then sort of came into the European style of, you know, relaxing and taking it easy, and and I appreciated that as well. So wherever I've lived, I've been able to appreciate what it brings to my life and the experiences, but uh, I've always got my place, my heart is in Australia. Yeah, definitely, and I also saw uh, the... the uh pictures that your mom has given you yeah. uh, about uh, the farmlands, right? Yes, uh, the, the shadow box. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was something last time I, I went home, my mother had a suitcase ready to go with everything in it because <laughs> she wanted me to have those uh, those little trinkets and memories as well that she had spent years um, putting together for me. Um, and also I had a Beatrix Potter collection, book collection, oh. And she um, she had been collecting that since I was born. So I've got you know those books and those mm -hmm. memories from that as well. So beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice of her doing that for you. Yes. So that you have more um, ways of connecting back home while being so far. Yeah, I could tell you the suitcase was pretty heavy though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand. What about you, Julie? Um, is there anything that you keep at home that reminds you of home? Where do you come from? Um, yeah, you probably see in the video, but in the hallway, we've got three paintings um, that were by my husband's art teacher. Um, and they're all um, pictures of our local area. And he got a large one in the lounge as well for his 50th. So there's all little reminders of, of Yorkshire and the rolling hills that obviously we don't have here in Holland. Wow, so lovely. Yeah. yeah. Um, any specific hurdles that you have experienced since you have been living in Leiden, like any culture shocks or um, things that have, um, I don't know, worried you or, yeah, I think, any incidents so far? Um, I think I, I get a culture shock more now. It sounds silly, but if I don't go out for sort of three days at a time and then I go, oh, yeah, I am living in a foreign country. Um, so, yeah, I think Corona's made everybody sort of retreat in a bit and, you know, mm. the interaction you used to have and the daily sort of trying to speak the language mm. isn't there so much. So mm. you have to sort of put yourself out there to try again. Yeah, I found that the directness of, of the Dutch is something that Julie and I talk about a lot. We've had to think differently about how we speak to people and how the information comes back to us um, because you think, oh, gosh, did I, you know, have I offended some, someone or something? No, it's just we're talking, but someone's uh, said something back and said, this is what I think. And you're like, oh, yeah, OK. I found that difficult to get my head around. There's very much the Dutch about the feeling, how it made them feel, and it's just like, it's just an email or a document. It's just like, <laughs> it's, work, it's words, it's business. It's just like, but yeah, how I felt about it. So, yeah, yeah that's that's interesting. Yeah. I think also biking around was was quite a experience when we were trying to find our our feet here and uh, you know a few close calls and yeah I know about priority from the right but I've actually had somebody cycling to me from the left <laughs> so yeah I've probably had two near misses wow. in the car 
What an experience. Yes, <laughs> and I'm still here. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> um, so uh, you had been very busy, I heard, and you just created your own business. I mean, I'm saying just, but I want to know more about it. When did it happen? Like, who came up with the idea? Mm. How did you decide to have uh, your own business in a foreign country? Yeah, I think, I mean, this comes from my, my object. Um, when I started Blue Ninja in 2013, um, I was in the UK on my own. Um, I had work opportunities, and so I was just head down and, and off I went. Um, when we moved to Germany, I was still having to travel back and forth between Germany and the UK to keep the business going, and I started to feel a disassociation between what I was doing and where I was. Um, so when we moved to the Netherlands... Um, I felt something was missing and I was still running Blue Ninja so I set up Blue Ninja here and I just felt that there was an element that I needed and it was Julie. So, you know, Julie and I discussed um, how we would work together and we just, we felt very, very good about running a business together. So we had a, a dinner with our with our significant others and sat down and went well what are we going to call our business and we went well why not just keep it as blue ninja yeah and i was working as a, a contractor at a bank before i left the uk and i could have just traveled backwards and forwards and stayed with friends but it wasn't really embracing my new life in in holland um so as you say we met and within two months we were working together and then yeah i moved in the august and we st we started as a partnership um, at the, the end of that year. So mm. I think you, when you know, you know. Yeah. yeah. So what is Blue Ninja about? Well, we're online business management, so we do all sorts of things. Uh, but we support small businesses so they can um, improve their processes, how they work, implement projects, give them the skills they won't necessarily have just to get them going. Um, so, yeah. We're very passionate about supporting small businesses as well. Um, we want to make sure that um, anyone who feels like I did when I first got here has that support function because we found that that was a gap here as well, that um, small businesses didn't really have a place to connect. Mm -hmm. So we've worked very hard on, on reaching out and being available to other small business owners that might feel a little lonely or they're a bit lost because um, it's hard to start a business in a foreign country. Um, so we've got a Facebook group um, that we've been nurturing for the last year, along with some other founders for small businesses in Leiden. And I think we're at almost 200 people in the group now. So we run monthly webinars um, and share information um, as every day, whatever we can share with people to help them with their businesses. Lovely. I didn't know there is such a group existing. What is the name of the group uh, for others who would be Yeah, it's Small enjoying. Business Connections Leiden. So I've heard uh, from a lot of businesses that um, during the pandemic, actually, their business um, started booming because everything became digital and they had more avenues of exploring. Um, how was it for Blue Ninja? Well, I was actually contracted for a little while because we had some clients that did um, big events, face-to-face -face events. So they sort of switched online. So we went from, oh, we're not doing anything to 17-hour days. So it was very up and down. But we found some great opportunities and we've networked all over the world now. So it's really opened some doors we weren't expecting. So we're, we're doing OK. Yeah. And we did apply for a government scheme for funding support um, when we had three months of, of very little to no work. So we did take opportunities that the that COVID provided to us as well. And I feel like that was a good step for us because it just meant that we didn't feel overwhelmed as well by what was going on. But my partner and I love being at home together as well. Um, I'm in the attic and he's down on the ground floor. But, you know, we meet for lunch and, and it's just we don't have the commute time anymore. So for us, we actually really enjoy it. I know for others that their housing situation isn't the same. It is much harder or families um, juggling a lot. But for us, um, it's been um, quite... Yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as an introvert myself, I really enjoyed uh, sitting at home and being with my books and, you know, being in my own aura. I definitely enjoyed that time, too. Um, so the pandemic, um, big roller coaster. Um, I know Julie is a bit closer to home than you are, um, Louisa. Yeah. Um, have your family uh, been able to visit you uh, or have you been able to go back home? No, this has been a big issue um, with Australians that have been 
relatively stuck in Europe or you know around the world who haven't been able to get back to Australia because restrictions and flight access has been horrific. Um, often, you know, you hear stories of someone being stuck for four or five months because their their flights keep getting cancelled, and then the price of flights keeps going up and up. I did talk to my parents about this because I felt I you know I wanted to go home last Christmas and I couldn't do it, and I felt very um, um, upset that I couldn't do that. But when we talked, it's like, well, there's nothing we can do, so we'll just plan ahead. Um, so we're hoping to have Christmas next year. Um, in Australia, and and you know my parents are also talking about coming over when they can, um, but it's about safety first. You know we we really want to make sure that this is managed and we're not um, spreading um, COVID around. So you know I understand that it's it's as much about protecting ourselves and others, um, particularly even travelling to the UK. I know Julie, you had a flight cancelled um, quite early on that possibly was disappointing, but actually yeah. It's, it's the right thing to do. Mm. I don't have any plans to go to the UK. It'll happen when it'll happen. Mm. We might have Christmas in the summer. doesn't really matter. Definitely. Safety comes first. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, right as we speak, um, there is a big festival going on in the Netherlands, Eu Eurovision, yeah. right? <laughs> so 39 countries are competing for a winning spot and then uh, hosting the show, hopefully in another country for next year. And uh, your countries are also participating in the competition. <laughs> Have you been able to follow, like, who is uh, competing from Australia and I've heard UK? the Australian song. That was quite good. Not my favourite. Yeah. I haven't heard the British, the UK one. No, I no. haven't either. No. I mean, it's we're, what, three countries here, so we can duke it out a little bit now, can't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've got, I've got a couple of favourites so far. Let the best one win. Right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so have you... Do you think found your place in Leiden? Do you feel like this is home? Yeah, this is my place. Or... Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, we've got residence permit now. Um, it'd be a bit of a problem if we didn't. Um, you know, we've bought a house. Um, we were always planning to retire in Europe. Maybe not Holland, but maybe it will be Holland now. I'm not sure. My husband's on countdown already. <laughs> Does he have any other country in mind? For well, him? we always talked about France. But he wants to live by the curse in France, and I've told him that's very expensive. So he needs to work a few more years first. <laughs> oh, I love the coast of France. Yeah. Amazing. What about you? I, I mean, we've, we've settled for the moment. Um, we're happy to take it as it, as it comes, um, but I do love it here. I think it's a good balance between the energy and, I guess, excitement of, of the UK versus the relaxation and the calmness of Germany. You know, Netherlands has got a bit of both. I'm quite, quite comfortable with the language here. Um, I struggle to speak other languages. I've, I've accepted it's not my forte. So um, being able to, to converse in English, whereas in Germany it was much harder because uh, not as many people where we were spoke English. So uh, I find it relaxing here to have a bit of a connection to both. Um, and also it's, it's quite easy to get to Australia from here as well. So uh, I've got all my all my countries and connections available if needed. Yeah, definitely. Um, because Leideners are, uh, relatively speaking, really good English, mm. I'm still struggling to learn the language. Uh, so it, it definitely helps when you have English-speaking people around definitely. you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's a, a better country in Europe for speaking English mm. um, that you could settle in quite easily. So. Totally agree. Mm. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for um, being with us today and sharing your story with fellow Leideners. Thank you for being with us on another episode of Hello Leiden. Please watch us, like us and share us. We are almost on all social media accounts. And if you are a foreigner living in Leiden and you have a story to share, just like Julie and Louisa did today, please email us at helloleiden at slotostand.nl. And have a good night. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Khushamadid Leiden. Hello Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi, Podai Leiden.